Okay, hold on just a moment here. Okay, here we go. One more time and do it one more time. That way he's got you on video. Call the meeting to order. All right. I'm sure everyone in the room right now can tell that we have something a little different going on tonight. Um, Councilman Jeff Stone contacted Mayor Benton and Bill Johnson and I and requested to be available tonight via video conferencing. So Councilman Stone's going to be with us over here on the projector and uh, he'll be able to speak and vote and do everything just like normal. And um, Robert Boone is holding our camera in his place tonight so that way he can also see and hear all of you. But just so we all know that this is in fact legal, we checked into it. Um, if anyone wants to look into it, chapter 610.015 covers that section of the Missouri statutes and states that um, votes taken by roll call in meetings um, shall be cast by members of the government body who are physically present and in attendance via video conferencing. So we're happy to have Jeff with us, even though he's not in the room tonight, it's just like he is. So <laughs> we'll move ahead. If you would call the roll call, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Braun? Present. Mr. Chiland? Present. Mr. Moore? Here. Ms. Reclue? Present. Mr. Shiverdecker? Here. Mr. Simmons? Here. Mr. Stone? Present. Mr. Vaughn? Here. Eight council members present. All right, may we all stand? Mr. Wilson, would you uh, give us our invocation and lead us in the pledge, sir? I'll be glad to do that, sir. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the blessings of this day and for the promise of rain overnight and into tomorrow. Again, Lord, that will help us with the drought here in the heartland, and we're thankful for the showers we've already received. I want to pray for those who are working on the infrastructure in this intense heat, and I thank you, Lord, for the progress that they're making day by day. I also pray, Lord, for the uh, school year, I want to remember, Lord, the students at every level in our community. I want to pray for uh, our public safety officers, the police officers and firefighters and all emergency services who will monitor them and help in time of need. I lift up everyone that serves this community at every level. I pray for our administrators, mayor, council persons, and all those who lead departments and do the work of this community. I just pray, dear God, that you'll bless and continue to guide us as we progress and grow together. I lift up this session tonight. It is my prayer, Lord, that you'll bless the discussions that are held and any decisions that are made that they be pleasing to you. As far as our city of Fulton family, for those, Lord, that are sick and need your constant care each day, I continue to lift up Chief Myers, Mr. and Mrs. Reclue, Mr. Chiland, Mr. Moore, and any and all others that are a part of the city family who need your touch daily. Thank you for your grace and love. Bless this session and all of our lives together to your service. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have our usual comments from visitors on the agenda. If you're a visitor and not scheduled on the agenda, you don't have to worry about coming up. It just, if you're not on the agenda, you can come up and you have three minutes to speak. Or if you're on the agenda, you take your, your turn. Any visitors that want to speak?
to an empty house. They play in the park all the time. They're in a house all by themselves. They're going to run across to that quick shop because they want to be with other people. So that's why I'm requesting, go ahead and build your affordable housing. Find a better location. Don't let money sway your vote. Just think of the young people in this town. That's what I'm asking of you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's no more visitors. We will. We do have another one coming oh, forward. We do. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, sir. You guys got your mics turned down. I can hardly hear you back there. I'll one out of twelve. Loud, one out of twelve. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, my name is Mike Bell, 95 King Street, Fulton. Um, you know who I am. I'm the owner of the land that we're trying to get rezoned. And uh, again, I I think that uh, my reasoning for this whole deal is that we want a reduction of zoning from three to two, which is really less impactful. And, I know that uh, some parties that want to buy my land has <laughs> stirred a hornet's nest up in this town, and I for I really don't understand why. I've heard a lot of uh, reasons, but I don't, you know, just heard that you know that's not the right place. Well, what is the right place? Um, I think that uh, the motivation for people is is are coming from people that are living in proximity the, of the proposed project, and I think that what this is all about, but. And I'm not going to get into all this stuff. This stuff, some of this stuff, sounds pretty crazy. So, again, we're just asking for reduction in zoning and uh, just want to move on. All right, that's all I got to say about this. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. This evening we have a need for a public hearing. There will be one public hearing on this evening's agenda for the purpose of certifying the rate of levy for the property tax for the 2018 tax year within the city of Fulton. The format of this hearing will be as follows. I will issue three calls for anyone wishing to speak in opposition, then three calls for anyone wishing to speak in favor. We ask that you come to the podium, state your name and address. This hearing is now declared open. There will be three calls issued for anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the matter being considered. First call, is there anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition to this matter? Second call, is there anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition to this matter? Third call, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition to this matter? There will be three calls issued for anyone wishing to speak in favor of the matter being considered. First call, is there anyone present who wishes to speak in favor of this matter? Second call, is there anyone present who wishes to speak in favor of this matter? And third call, is there anyone present who wish to speak in favor of this matter? This public hearing is now closed and we will return to our regular agenda. We'll move on to the count of the consent agenda. Um, would you like me to read those? Yes, ma'am. Okay. On tonight's um, consent agenda, we have item A, approval of the City Council meeting minutes of July 24, 2018. B, approval of the City Council meeting minutes of August 14, 2018. C, approval of the Director of Administration report of July. D, is an acceptance of the following board and commission reports, historic preservation from July 17th, planning and zoning commission from July 11th, public utility board from July 23rd. E is approval of an event request from Vision Arts Eye Care for their annual fall barbecue fundraiser and silent auction at Memorial Park on Friday, October 5th from 6 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Item F, 
is approval of an event request from First Christian Church for their annual fall festival on Saturday, September 22nd, 2018 from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and to allow for the closure of 7th Street from Market Street to Court Street. Item G is approval of Nancy Lewis and Dale Lewis's request to designate 910 Court Street as a Fulton Historic Property. And item H is approval of OBE, I'm going to butcher this, but Iqbagwe's request to designate 410 East 8th Street as a Fulton Historic Property. Mr. Moore, I would like a couple items removed from the consent agenda, please. Yes, sir. C. C. Okay. G and H, please. Can you say those again? C, G, and H. I would ask for a motion if, uh, if there are no other opposition, if there's a motion to approve the other items. I'll make a motion to approve the other items. I guess the question is, how can a remodel permit cost more than a whole new house permit? I want to say it's probably forty thousand. Just looking at the fee. By a typo. Okay, but even if I mean, the the new home was a garage. The new home was a garage, and it was based on square footage. Is the twenty four ninety nine. I believe it was uh, it's seven cents a square foot, whatever it was. That's what the new home was. I'd have to look at the residential remodel and look at that on there. So I think I th I'm pretty sure that residential remodel. I'm pretty sure it's forty thousand, and the fees based on the price of the room. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do we do we have all this in? A laid out plan. In, it, it that, should be. There's a, it's like a schedule. Sorry. It's kind of like a, a menu. If you if you add a, another toilet, it's a dollar. If you add another electrical oh, circuit, it's ten dollars. Mm -hmm. um, I can get you a copy of it. The fees and schedules that we charge. And I, I just I guess I just look at it and say twenty four dollars. That and you, so you can see where my John, concern was. Our, our, our fees concern. are are very inexpensive. Um, we looked at this. It's, it's been probably 10 years since we've addressed this issue. At that point in time, and we actually doubled the fees to get a, to get a permit. Um, at that point in time, the city council chose to keep the permit fees cheap in order that the a cost to, to build a house wouldn't be affected by the cost of the permit. Sure. A lot of uh, some other towns even use like one percent of the construction cost as the cost of your permit. Um, so if you built a two hundred thousand dollar house, your permit would be just two thousand dollars. 
it just looked awful funny to me. Right. The way the numbers, I, I can look back the way the numbers and the way it goes is, right is very, is very strange. Maybe you can go check right now. Yeah, I'll go check. And report back later. All right. Is there any other discussion on that topic? Get a motion for that one. Mr. Moore? All in favor? Let's go ahead and get a motion okay. and a okay. second. Can we, wait, can we wait till he gets back with us um, to make that motion? Sure. We can sit here. Well, uh, was there another? Take table this one until he yeah, returns. Yes, we'll just come fine. right back around to it. All right. Okay. So item G. Oh, hang on a second. G is the... the historical property information yes. and I've read through it and in I was wondering a couple of different things first and foremost is we're being asked to approve something that we don't have the minutes from the previous meeting at I understand there was just another meeting this week and it was very quick turnaround time but we're being asked to say yes or no on something that we haven't seen the historical minutes from their meeting. Um, that, that's one reason why I pulled 910. If you read through that, very interesting. She did a great job explaining why. I mean, I was really impressed with that one. More importantly, 410 East 8th Street. <laughs> we're, we're looking to take that to a historical property and if anybody has driven by the historical, that, that piece of property, it's historical, all right. It's pretty rough. And I was concerned two reasons. Is it on our demolition list? Because that's how bad it is. It's, it's horrible. And then I did a little research. And to the best that I can see with the, by the county records, the gentleman that's listed on here isn't even the property owner by county records. So. I, I've got a question about that one also. Like you said, it's a neat looking house in dire need of restoration, I think, just to get it habitable. But if we make a historic designation for this home, does that any way impede the homeowner from restoring the house? No, I don't know if there are any restrictions once the, it's historical or the, the city of Fulton historical code historical preservation code has been specifically designed so that there are no restrictions it is it is a feel-good designation that the individual wants and has a desire to maintain the character of his house um, if, if the property owner wanted to change the windows after being declared historical, they could. If they wanted to change the roof line, they could. They, there are no restrictions. It is just uh, the historical designation in Fulton basically means that the house's history um, has been documented and looked at and meets the Historical Preservation Commission's um, somewhat objective goals as to whether it meets the requirements um, and, and their goals and desires. There are no there are no strings attached to a historical designation either positive or negative for the property. Okay. Other than they receive a small plaque, ceramic plaque that they're allowed to place on the exterior of their house. Um, as far as the minutes, I would just note that we do not provide those minutes um, until they've been approved by the board. Um, I mean, we could definitely provide them as a draft, um, but until those boards are, or the board has approved those minutes, we don't, we don't give you guys those just yet. Kind of like our council minutes, until you've approved them, we don't represent them as official minutes of the city. Um, the other thing is, I was not at this meeting, but in talking to my deputy clerk, um, there is a list in our code of various qualifications and in order to meet this you just have to have one qualification you have to have either historic architecture um, a historic happening um, or your home just needs to be older than 50 years 50 years old so it is a rather loose policy 
Um, but like Bill said, it's, it's designed that way for that reason. Um, so in that, the, the Historic Preservation Commission felt these two homes met the criteria and made that recommendation for both. So has the Historic uh, Commission communicated with these owners of this one? Yeah, it's my understanding and, uh, that David McDaniel and the uh, commission and the Historical Society helped that individual with the application. Has Dennis had any conversation with these? Or? Dennis was in that meeting, so he might know a little more about it than I do. Okay. Historical designations for those yeah. two properties? Or to well, East A Street, what their plans more, are? More importantly, uh, for they weren't sure on the plans of that one. The one on Court Street was, uh, I believe it's lived in. That, but yes. The individual that owns the house on A Street mm -hmm. is in Arizona right now, yeah. and they didn't give us any what what his plans were mm -hmm. he, in the in the near future. Trying to restore. I think so. In the but near future. In, I hope so. <laughs> but do, doesn't uh, if we if we choose to accept that doesn't that take uh, that keeps us from or anybody from uh, destroying that property or tearing no, it this down. is a this, no. this is a local historic no. designation so if they tear it down it doesn't mean then it the uh, history's it gone nothing. so that right. don't so what we're talking about doesn't make much sense it's uh, as a for a saw it's a it's a feel-good designation it yeah, but if it's not there, it recognizes feel the, good of what it recognizes the homeowner's desires and goals of trying to keep the property in, 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 maintaining its historic significance. There are there are no strings, no benefits, no penalties associated with um, in in Fulton. Again, like a, some towns, to become a historic property, they have a list of strings and conditions, and get down to an architectural review committee before you're allowed to modify the exterior of your home. Fulton has taken the very deliberate um, direction of not imposing any rules and restrictions on any of the properties. Can you tell us, Dennis, was the, <laughs> did, did 410 happen to make our list of 80? Uh, yes. It's okay. All. And so were they notified? <laughs> well, it changed uh, the, rid the owner that we had, uh, when we did the search, uh, it changed hands. So it recently? Was, I mean, yes, cause it, recently. Yeah, because I, I, I know I went and looked at the county tax records, and it's not the same person. But As what's on here? Yes. Yeah, and we have the other person. So it did change hands whenever our, uh, they brought that name up is when we got to looking at it. So it did change okay. hands. Within the last two months? Maybe mm -hmm. three months when we started compiling the list. But it's still on. It's still on our list for. Yeah, it's not the, the, the top ones, but it's on the list. It is on the list. That's what I thought. Okay, thank you. But in uh, but when we formed the historical district years ago, we knew that we'd get into situations like this. So you got to be some patient. That's why I asked in the near future, or you'll keep a track of what they're doing. I'm keeping track of the answers I've gotten from property owners so far. Good. Going to check back with them. Uh, all of the property owners I've called, they have plans, you know, to address the properties, but not sure how soon. So I'm going to keep track, keep contacting them. All right. Okay. So, so back to the historical piece. Is there a way for us, instead of voting on something that we don't, whether it's a draft or the or the true minutes holding it off and put bringing it to the council until we have sure. what happened at the meeting that would make sense to me. Is that a motion? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> I. That is very yep. Yeah, that is very possible. We okay. could definitely take it on to the next meeting, um, and. And hopefully by that time, the Historic Preservation Commission will have met again. And if not, we can provide you with draft minutes.
So does anyone have a motion? I think so. what do you think? I'd, I'd make that motion that we do that. Well, and wait till see till we see the report. At least the draft would the, yeah. would the draft be okay? I mean, because like the P and Z might only meet three times a year. Right. And so. Yeah, but historic preservation meets ever. Not still every two or three months. Yeah. Yeah, we meet. They so, meet monthly. So if we if we if we Not provided anymore. the draft. Not anymore. No, we haven't. Hmm? I'm not certain of when their next meeting is at this time, but I'm sure we can provide you they have, in the last In the last year, they have become much more active. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was yep. a while they were meeting maybe twice a year, mm -hmm. and they have been meeting much more. Re About every other month we've been meeting. Would, it, would a draft be acceptable of the minutes? I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, it, it, by any means, I wouldn't see why it wouldn't be. Right. At least we have an idea of what happened if somebody wasn't there. Right. Okay. Very good point. Okay, I'll I'll make the motion. Also, that we actually, take that's okay. We actually already have a motion. Second. Oh, we do. Oh, we already we do. do. Okay. And <laughs> Councilman Vaughn, was your motion to um, approve those for the next meeting yeah. once you've had time to review those draft minutes and also approve the Director of Administration report? Or is that going to be a separate motion? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was a separate motion? Yes. Okay. And was there a second to Mr. Vaughn's motion? Second. Thank you. All in favor of the motion? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Good job. So now back yeah. to the DOA yeah. report. Yeah. It should have been $15 instead of 115 On our remodels, everything up top. Okay. Yeah. That makes me feel a little bit. Yeah. And then under is $15. And then once you get over 5,000, then it starts increasing. So it was just a misprint. Okay. I still think that at some point we should maybe look at this, all the planning and zoning stuff with the not that any of them got to change, but just so we, we have an idea okay. of how it falls. I can look at Columbia and Jeff Cities and get back. I, and that. I'm not saying that we need to change them, but at least current, if it's been, did you say 10 years, Bill? I think 2008 is what. Yeah, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just pulling that number. Uh, but 2008, it's been a, I believe. It's, it's been, been a long time. Maybe. Uh, maybe we could get the information and when we have our uh, meeting in retreat September, yeah our retreat we can look at it look at it a little bit then okay per the permit fees <coughs> at the retreat yeah sure. I feel a whole lot better about fifteen dollars is a hundred and fifty <laughs> I make a motion to accept the director administration report. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. All in favor accept the director administration report. Say aye. Aye. Thank you, Dennis. Aye. aye. And we shall move on to item number nine. Okay. Presentation acceptance of the financial report the month of July. Ms. Kathy. And this is Hoslaw. Well, I start off by telling you six months of sales tax are recorded. We're up 2% so far. So it's just up and down, up and down. Um, probably the biggest capital expense we had this month was we are constructing a new outbuilding behind the warehouse. It sits right behind the purchasing warehouse. I think the total expenses to date have been about $140,000, and those are divided between the utility funds. Okay. I think electric was 90, water and sewer 10,500, sewer, well, water and gas, sewer 30, so they came up about to 140. Um, we did make the annual principal payment on the water bonds this month. It was $130,000, and the semi-annual interest was $64,200. Okay. 
and I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has. Do you have any questions? Motion to approve the financial report. Second. Second. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 <coughs> well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Gap. Well, we move on to number 10, unfinished business. Park and Recreation Facility and Baseball and Softball Complex update. Um, uh, update on the MSD property. I uh, spoke to the folks at MSD. Also folk, spoke to uh, a person over at the state office. And right now that they are not giving tours of that facility. Um, once it's officially up for sale then the realtor will bring people in and let them tour it and uh, take a look at it. So as of right now, we can't get in to take a look. Um, so we're continuing on with the architect. Uh, we met two weeks ago with the architect, met for about four hours, made a lot of progress. We've been back and forth for the past two weeks, um, just talking about little changes. Um, we're meeting again tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, I think talking to them and what their timeline is, that we're, we hope to bring a uh, three-dimensional design and a cost estimate to the council probably by the second second meeting in September. So that's the goal right now. There's not a second meeting in September. Uh, we have that MML conference. Then it'll be the first meeting in October. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that that that's their timeline for right now. So, okay. and uh, I, I feel real good about the progress they're making and. I think uh, I think it's going to be something you guys will like. Any right. questions? Any questions for Clay? <laughs> Anything uh, about the baseball complex? Or again, still with, no change. The baseball complex design's done. Um, specs are ready. It's just a matter of uh, do we want to put it out for bid now, or do we want to wait and put it out for bid with the uh, community center? Okay. I would like to see it go to bid before, so we're moving forward with something. And that, that's, I mean, that's something we can sit and discuss. I mean, if that's what the council wants to do, then um, we can do that again. It's it's ready. The, the main components of that are ready. Um, we've just been kind of working on the community center side of it with the idea that we, they'd go out for bid at the same time. But um, whatever the council wishes, that's that's what we can do. I think we were holding off, weren't we? Because yeah. we didn't know the cost of the rec center, and the big question was, can we afford the rec center and the baseball complex? And and again, that 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 question won't be answered until we have bid numbers. Right. So whether we bid it now or bid it. But if you bid it now, if you bid the baseball complex yeah. now, then yeah. by set and wait October. Those bids aren't going to be valid anymore, aren't they? Uh, I think it depend. Um, it depend on how willing the vendor is to to hold those prices. I would say with the uh, the cost of steel fluctuating like it is, they probably would not hold them more than thirty or sixty days. Okay. So, so I would almost think we need to hold off and see what the rec center is going to look like. But our, our plan is when we, we bring them both to you, we're, we're going to ask put them both out for bid at the same time. Okay. Well, that's, that's with, the with, right a, with, a, with preliminary cost estimates. Yes. And you, you will have two preliminary cost estimates the first meeting in October. That's the goal, yes. Of both projects? Mm -hmm. On both projects, yeah. And again, we're working off uh, the last, last architect's estimates on the baseball complex. So those numbers may be a little outdated, but hopefully they're pretty accurate. So is this your last weekend for the pool and the splash pad, or? It's uh, the 14th of August was the last day. 
So we we're, were closed, and uh, Splash Pad will be open till uh, probably keep it open through October until the weather starts to cool down. Is the pool drained? The pool is empty. Yes. Are we going to be able to use that pool next year? Are we going to have to uh, do some repairs? I'm just wondering. I mean, we we got into a situation in in early August, late July, early August, where the uh, pit pump stopped, just yeah. quit working, and we were we were shut down probably yeah. eight or nine days. Yeah. Um, and it was just a matter of getting it out of there, getting it over, getting it fixed. Um, they did a rush job, and it still took eight days. Uh, the pump was dated 1964. I don't know why we have a pump that's older than our pool. But at some point in time, yeah. somebody put, put a 1964 pump in there. Oh, yeah. And uh, the motor's on has been replaced several times, but the pump yeah. is very old. What was, what was the cost on that, approximately? <sighs> The repair cost was around four thousand dollars. Thank you. So, can I move it from there? Save money. Any more questions for Mr. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Clay. Yeah. We'll move on to any new business, Mr. Williams. Um, it was mentioned that I should talk about this now. The, the street sweeper. Um, it's. It, we currently have a street sweeper that's like eight eight years old. It's got almost eight thousand hours on it. It is currently disassembled in our service garage. Um, it's going to it's an estimated cost of in excess of ten thousand dollars to get the repairs that it's been told that we should get on it to get it operational again. Um, it just kind of hurt. To put ten thousand dollars into an eight-year-old machine that we're, we're fixing what we know is worn today, but it's not a complete overhaul of the entire unit. Uh, we, based on that, and just it just kind of so happened that a salesman came to town and we said we're looking, kind of maybe looking for a street sweeper. <clears throat> he brought one to us within a, about a week. Um, I think we can actually give Daryl credit for that. Um, he, the salesman was in town to talk to Daryl, but he also did street sweepers. Anyway, the, the one we got is has the same uh, size hopper on it. Both units had um, five cubic yard hoppers. Uh, the unit we that, it, that we're demoing is currently is priced at about 150,000. If we replace the unit that we have, it's about I understand about 240,000. Um, the operator has been driving it now for a few days. I, I hear that the only thing he doesn't like is new sweepers are more of a vacuum cleaner style rather than brooms and a dustpan. Um, he said that once in a while a, a stick will get lodged in the vacuum tube and cause the kind of the whole thing to plug up. Well, it really doesn't matter what type of vacuum unit you get, you are still going to have sticks that, that are going to go up the vacuum hose at certain perfect angles and are going to jam. Um, Kyle and I have been talking about it a little bit, and we're not looking for any action or decision from the council tonight. But we, like I said, we do not have this in the budget. I have asked Hoschlag to review the finances, and she has identified um, funds that could be used to make this purchase. The unit that we have, um, we talked to the vendor that delivered the one that we're demoing. He doesn't want does not want the unit nor would he give us anything on trade um, based on that comment um, it's been suggested that maybe we maybe we spend the, a portion of the ten thousand to get the unit at least operational and then sell it as an operational unit without without putting it back on the streets of Fulton again um, one thing that the, the street sweeper obviously sweeps the streets but one thing that we are using it for and getting additional justification for is part of our stormwater management plan. By running the street, street sweeper, we are able to um, get points when it comes to our stormwater permit that we are removing debris, sand, leaves, um, litter from the what's going to run down the storm drains and then eventually end up in the creeks. Right. So we do get some credit on our stormwater permit for it as well. Anyway, that's, that's pretty much where I am. Well, we're going to continue to evaluate it. I think we have it for a few more days. 
probably through the end of the week. And we'll probably, I'm guessing this will be an item of topic uh, for discussion at the next council meeting and, and or we'll wait until put one in the budget next year. Bill. Yes. Not to get into any details about the leases, these types of machines, or, or is it only a, a sale item? Um, they, they do lease them. We asked that question when they were, what's it, 2000 a week? What was the number they threw out, Kyle? Two thousand a month. Oh. I don't. I, we we we. It was it, the, the question was asked, but it was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Man. Could everybody else hear him? Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> the only question I have is, you said the hopper is the same size. Yes. Is the water tank? The same size, or is it more efficient? What I'm saying is, if we if we buy this unit, is it going to be in the field as long as the old unit, or is it going to have to go back to get refilled more often? I don't know. No, no, no. That's the, the, the how 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 the, big is the water storage? The water storage compared to the one that we got right now. Yes. That, that really and, and the. Okay. And it's two different t designs and machines. The one we have now is basically, like I said, a, a broom and a dustpan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sweet. And the, the water is used to control dust. Right. It's not used to wash. It's used to control dust. Okay. Um, on, the, on the one we're demonstrating, it's, it's a vacuum cleaner. It's brushes that'll break up the dirt and break up the particles, but then it has a running across the entire bottom of the street sweep of the unit is a, is a vacuum head. And so it's sucking all that dust and all that dirt from the street and all the leaves and the litter up into the hopper. So the water on the new one doesn't necessarily serve the same purpose as the water on the old one. Okay. Cool. So I've got a question uh, then. But talking about the stuff that it sweeps up, what? What's he do with it, or does he have to go clear back to the warehouse to dispose? He does of not. It? He has. A, he carries a, a hose with him, and he hooks to fire hydrants throughout the yeah. community. Okay. Now, when it comes time to dump, um, the he, he dumps up to a, a one of our solid waste roll-off containers, and the 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 hopper lifts and then dumps in a solid waste container. All of that material that he sweeps in the street must go to the landfill. Yeah, interesting. Good question. Good question. So, uh, did not read somewhere, or did I dream that this had a five-year warranty? Or and, 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 and guys, we're just. We, this is the only one we've demoed, so this is the only one we've that I have any information on. Yeah, we'll need more. But yes, the one that we're demoing does come with a full five-year parts and labor warranty. Um, I asked him if if we chose to work on some of that some of the machines in, in our own service garage if we would get any credit for that. And he said uh, we do have the option of l allowing you to buy out of the um, labor side of the deal for the five years and they would give us a $3,500 credit. Which mm -hmm. kind of sounds good, kind of sounds cheap. Yeah. You know, to get to get the warranties work done, we would have to take re take return the unit to St. Louis. So that's you know there's pretty much a day to, by the time you take it down and then go back down there and get it. It's going to take you a couple hours each way. So I don't know. Two people. So it sounds like you're still looking. We're still. This is. I'm. I guess what I'm doing is planting seeds. Of, okay. Sure. We are going to be in the market for a street sweeper in the, in the very near future. Hopefully, right. we don't know if we can make it the next year or not. You going to check with someone else about purchasing, uh, I mean, or another company? Or yeah, yeah we'll, 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 probably get, we'll probably get the company that, the one we have, probably get them to bring in a demo unit and sure. let us keep, keep using that for a while. All right. All right.
And that's not necessarily a bid item, an item that has to go out for bid? It is. Okay. It is an item that would need to be bid. Okay. So we uh, hold that to the next meeting? We'll, we'll, probably, we'll probably talk about it again next month at the next meeting. Give me kind of an update on it. Well, we will move to number 13, resolutions. We're actually going go, uh, oh, oh, to go to council concerns. I will one. start on the end with Mr. Shiverdeck. Yeah. yeah, I have nothing. Okay. Mr. Vaughn? No. I'm good. good. Got any concerns? Nope. Nope. Oh. Mary? Yes, I'd like to thank... Uh, Oh. Well, Bill, also the, uh, uh, I believe the city fire firemen that uh, watered our trees. We were in trouble with our trees downtown here, it's all kind of drooping and whatever. Our fire department, I spoke with Bill and he got I them to. Was, I think it was Parks and Rec. It was the Parks and Rec. Okay, building Parks, grounds. Okay, well, anyhow, I'd like to thank them very much for watering our trees and looking after them. It was very important and they were really in bad condition. So I, I'd like to thank all, whoever did that. Thank you, Bill. I'm sorry I skipped Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone. Thank you. I just want to take the opportunity to thank Courtney and Darren and Bill for working through this opportunity of video conferencing in. Um, I did not want to miss you know, another meeting this year, and, but this was a trip that I could not also miss. So thanks to the three of them for thinking it through and brainstorming and working out technical issues. Um, since we brought it up already about the historical commission, it seems almost a waste of time for us to approve historical designations when it really doesn't mean anything. And maybe it needs to mean something. Maybe we need to revisit what we're considering historical homes and restrictions that we place on these homes so they maintain their historical significance, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that somebody doesn't change the roof structure or, and that's a, something in the future. So I will say that they are actually working on their ordinance, but they've been working on it for well over three years now. Okay. Um, yeah. The city of Fulton is part of a certified local government program, and that means that any changes they make to their ordinance or their guidelines or anything like that has to be reviewed. Um, and it is a very, very long process. It can take up to six months just to get a response of, hey, we read the first paragraph and we don't like it. Well, it's so, taken three years not to even submit yeah. something. So, so um, they've actually, they've submitted a few things. <coughs> um, it's, it's in the works. I don't anticipate you're going to see any big changes probably anytime soon, but we okay. can be hopeful. Be best I remember, Steve, you remember this? They uh, used to give plaques to the people that mm -hmm. met certain criteria for the plaques. We still do. We that would be them. those designations. The city did that and also the state did that, didn't it? Yeah, the state, yeah. I think the state gave some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. State. But we learned, I've served on it for a couple of years, and if you, those who are really interested in it is not too bad, but we did find out that people come out and say, well, then I would never redo a historical house if you get too strict. Because at one time they was down to you couldn't put side or you couldn't do, yeah. and you had to maintain certain colors and so it's they've been through a lot. The ones are still there. They are faithfuls because they've heard their share of okay. yeah. discontent. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I attend those meetings now, and they are they work very hard to get to this point. They're trying very hard to do it, but there's so much detail and so many different things. You're getting all this input from everyone. Immediately start messing with it, and People get, you know, all panicky. You know, I, I can't do this. I can't afford to have this. So he's right. It, um, just be patient with them. And if you've got input, I'm sure that the committee would take, you know, concern for mm -hmm. that. You, okay. You're more than welcome to come to any of their commission meetings. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Mr. Shiley? I'll pass. I do have one, one thing. Sure. I just wanted to make sure Wayne was really good with the TVs where they're at. This one's a little fuzzy. That no, they're they're waiting weird. for new cables. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you know, I know. <laughs> that one's fuzzy. It, it yeah. is. 
John, that is fuzzy. It is fuzzy. We ordered, we ordered two pieces to re that, that will allow the connection from our 15-year-old equipment to a brand new TV. It required two adapters. Wow. The adapters were $2 a piece. <laughs> and okay. $15 in shipping. No, well, well <laughs> free shipping to store. But when, and we received the two adapters yesterday, but when they opened the box, one, one correct adapter was in there and one non-correct adapter was in there. So our IT staff, they went ahead and figured out a way to at least get something going to that monitor. This, this one over here is as good as it's going to get. Oh, that one's good. Well, the part of the issue, if, well, you, you kind of see you really can't read the name clearly and it's not real sharp and that kind of thing. Um, that's due to the fact, even though it's a 4K TV, our cameras are 460 something pixels. Pixel. Pixel. So we're so we need so to make so a motion running to uh, <laughs> so we're huh? new cameras. So we're yeah. so we're. You got to remember this. <coughs> TVs are 2018 on, technology, and the cameras and the equipment that we have in the in the video room is all. Basically, 15 or 16 years old. It is all. Well, John, one thing you got to remember: is if you don't ask for it, you never get it. That's right. Mm -hmm. so this I've been is told no a lot in my life. <laughs> the, way, the way I said it earlier, just what somebody else pointed that out is, it's only as good as our weakest link, and our weakest link is is the cameras and the rest of the video equipment. That's doing fine. But if if you guys are happy with the one on on our left, but that is so much better than what it was. Oh yes. Oh. Very nice. Yeah. There you go. You should never break your yeah. neck. <laughs> You're not what? sitting there. That's Perfect. all I had. Thank you. Okay. Thank all right. you. Uh, we'll move on to a resolution. And there are and no resolutions. There's no resolutions, so we'll go to ordinance. Okay. Our first ordinance would be, Mr. Johnson, you want to tell us a little bit about this? The, uh, this is something we do every year. We set our tax levy. Um, and what, what, what we have going on here is, this, this is my agenda. Um, this year the levy is, going to, is proposed to be set at 0.5353 cents. That is up from 0.5291 a year ago. But as you, as you know, the county right now is going through a reassessment. And it is the, we, we have very limited input on what our levy is. We submit a form outlining some of the debt that we have and other information to the state. And the state auditor replies back with um, a worksheet that says what our debt, what our levy can be, up with, as a ceiling. And we've always gone with the, with the maximum amount allowed. But our, um, the city's levy, or no, the city's assessed value actually dropped between 2017 and 2018. In 2017, it was 128 million, just to make it easy. It was 128 million, and in 2018, it dropped to 127 million. <coughs> okay, so our, our, let, our assessment dropped, which resulted in a slight increase in the assessed value. So as, as, if my numbers are correct, and I d did them several times, I think they are. If you have a house in the community with a retail value of $100,000, um, that means if it's at a retail value of $100,000, in Callaway, in the state of Missouri, residential property is assessed at 19% of market. So your assessed value would be about $19,000. And then you divide that $19,000 by 100 because your assessment is dollars per hundred. And then take that times your levy. That will give you your amount of, of, of taxes. Um, if you have a house in Fulton with a market value of, of $100,000, your city tax bill will go up $1.18 next year as a result of this uh, tax levy. Okay. Are there any questions? Yes. 
2019, we get another assessment, and now the assessed value of our property is 129 million. It's gone up. Does the tax rate then go back down? Not necessarily. It, it, that, that's all determined by the state auditor and the, and the formulas that they use in crunch. We are not, the, the goal, and it's actually law, we are not to receive a windfall as a result of a reassessment. Now, I'm not going to say that we won't get some more money, mm -hmm. but we are not to receive a windfall. I, I, can, I can almost guarantee that if, if everybody's assessment went up 20%, the amount the collected taxes we'd get would not go up 20%. It would go up a, a, a small portion. They would not allow us to have that windfall. But the rate would remain the same? I don't, I, I don't know what the state tax formula is, okay. what, what the state auditor uses to determine the, the values. There would be some adjustment. I don't, I, I'm not going to sit here and say oh, whether I know it would go up or down. Okay. I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. Steve. Steve. Yes. We take a five minute break.
all the meat and back the order, please? What? We just started again. Mr. Vaughn, would you read bill number? Oh, bill number fifteen thirteen for us. Bill number fifteen thirteen, an ordinance fixing the tax rate and levying leveling tax taxes for the calendar year twenty eighteen on all taxable property in the city of Fulton, Missouri, and establish an effective date. I make a motion to place Bill 1513 for second reading at the last meeting. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yes. 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 Anybody have? Anyone no. opposed? No. no. One no? Okay. No. So motion okay. carries. Motion carries. We move on to second reading at the night's meeting by title on. Okay. Councilman Vaughn, can you read that one for a second reading for us, please? Councilman Vaughn? You got your finger on the mic. We reading it all three times tonight? No, we're reading. You made a motion to read it for the second reading of tonight. Oh, you said did I say tonight? Yes. Yeah. That's fine. Go ahead and just do it for a second reading. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. It's all good. Everybody's a little space. Misspoke. Uh, Bill 1513, an ordinance of fixing the tax rate and leveling taxes for the calendar year 2018 on all taxable property in the city of Fulton and establish an effective date. I make a motion to place Bill 1513 for third reading at the next schedule. Good job. <laughs> Second? Second. Any discussion? Oh. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor of this for a third reading at next regularly scheduled council meeting? Say aye. Yes. Aye. yes. Aye. Okay. And Thanks, Deb. No. no. Anyone opposed? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So seven in favor, one opposed. Motion carries. <laughs> okay. So we'll go ahead and go to second reading ordinances. All right, so we have uh, Councilman Schiberdecker will read that one for us. Okay. Yep. Councilman Schiberdecker, you read Bill number 51512 for us. Please. Yes, sir. Second reading. Bill number 1512, an ordinance reclassifying under the zoning ordinance certain land in the city of Fulton, Missouri, known as 711 and 715 Nickel Street, and establishing an effective date. I make a motion we advance Bill. 1512, first, third reading at our next scheduled meeting. Second. Okay, all in favor of moving to next scheduled meeting? Yes. 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 Those opposed? No. no. Raise your hands, Raise. please. Two opposed? Third reading ordinance be bill number 1510. Mr. Simmons, would you read that for us, please? Bill number 1510, an ordinance reclassifying under the zoning ordinance certain land in the city of Fulton, Missouri, located at Rice Road and U.S. Business 54, and establishing an effective date. I make a motion to approve the third reading of Bill 1510 tonight and final reading of Bill 1510, or final approval of Bill 1510 tonight. Okay, we have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Third. 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 Yes. Okay, yes. all those in favor to place this bill for final passage tonight? Yes. 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 And anyone opposed? No. No. Okay. Okay, the motion passes. So we will now do a final roll call. That's all right with you, Mr. That's Moore? That's all right with you. Okay. So if you'll just uh, please let me know your vote when I call your name. Mr. Shiland? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Ms. Reclue? Yes. Mr. Shiverdecker? Yes. Mr. Simmons? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Vaughn? No. And Mr. Braun? No. 
Six council members affirmative, two opposed. Therefore, it passes. Would you like me to read those announcements? Yeah. Okay, yeah. certainly. So the bow hunter permit meeting will be held Tuesday, September 4th here in the council chambers. Um, anyone who's interested in that can see the information here on the agenda, or if you'd like to get with me or give me a call, I'm happy to pass that information along to you. The um, annual Mayor's Cup Golf Tournament will be held Friday, September 7th at Tanglewood Golf Course. If you'd like information about that, you can contact Parks and Recreation or Tanglewood. The next City Council meeting will be held Tuesday, September 11th at 6.30. As a reminder, this will be our only meeting for September. And the annual Town and Country Dinner will be held on Thursday, September 20th, 2018 at 5 o'clock p.m. at Wise Brothers in Kingdom City. Um, council members and staff who would like to attend can also let me know. I will need your RSVPs by tonight. And those are our announcements. And I take there is no need for executive session, so we admit Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Thank you.